Hi guys, just doing a tutorial today on how to set up Reaper for live show use. And what I mean by live show use is setting it up to be able to run backing tracks and a click track um, along with a live performance that you would do. So one of the things that a lot of people who want to run backing tracks kind of strive for, and one thing that it feels like when you first start getting into it that you end up giving up is the ability to improvise or to be able to rearrange the song on the fly and you don't actually have to give that up when you move to tracks you can set it up so that markers and regions queue up different sections of a song and that you can be able to smoothly go in between them now first off one of the things that I will tell you if you use Reaper for live show use or if you just use Reaper in general. One of the things I would highly suggest getting is the SWS extensions. Now SWS stands for Standing Water Studios and it's a third party that makes plugins for Reaper. And I would highly suggest donating because some of their extensions are just amazing. They add so much to Reaper, such as marker actions, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, some other videos you can find online are of snapshots which is really good for mixing. And they added a bunch of actions. Um, you can do project lists. So I would highly suggest downloading that. Um, so if you want to do that and you haven't already, go ahead and download that. Just pause this video, download it, install it, come back. Okay, so some of these features you don't need SWS extensions for, but for a few of them, you will need it. Um, let me just get uh, some of the basic actions you don't need it for out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and play this track and I'm going to have it go between verse and chorus and, or intro, click intro, intro and I think I'll probably stop it midway in the verse. So let's just go ahead and let it play. One, two, three, four. As you can see, this is my intro section, and it's going to go straight into the verse. And just let that song play all the way through it would continue from start to finish unhindered it would just play it through as it's designed and it wouldn't cycle through anything that was not already set up so what if during a live show we want to rearrange things what if say we're in the middle of the song and we want to do the chorus again well what we can do is set up markers now you see I have these little blue things set up and they have numbers to them okay what these are are markers that Reaper you can put it in there and Reaper will know this is an important part of the song or this is the start of something or the end of something so it remembers that section well whenever you put in a marker it instantly cues it up to where you can be able to just recall it by hitting a number on your keyboard. So I hit the number three and as you can see marker three popped up. I hit five. Marker five popped up. And you can be able to go into the actions list, type in marker, and you can be able to set MIDI controls to that just by going to you know go to marker whatever marker you want and then hit add and it will prompt you for MIDI learning for whatever you want there so I have a MIDI controller that's set up that has 16 buttons all dedicated to markers so I could be able to go through one through 16 different sections of that song and I think the marker list goes up to 
29 or 30 and I think the regions list goes up to about 40 so you can set up where both of these could do that where you know markers and regions both could be recalled just by the press of a button well that's all fine and good unless you're able to do it you know it's it's not applicable unless you're able to do it smoothly and that's what a lot of people don't realize that Reaper actually has a way to do it smoothly similar to how Ableton does and it actually has several options for it so let's go into the options and you can see smooth seeking I have it turned on okay and it will seek at the end of a measure well, we can actually get more in depth with this go into the preferences go into seeking and you can see that I've turned on where it's not at the end of a measure it's at the plays till the next project marker end of current region or start of next region before seeking and um, just as an extension of that if it's past the last marker it will just do to the end of a measure whenever you hit to seek somewhere else now seeking generally means just clicking somewhere and just telling it to go to a location but hitting these marker cues is the same thing so let's say that we're in the intro and we want to repeat it all I have to do is hit the cue for two and it instantly cycles back to that so let's say we're in the intro and we want to completely skip the verse I hit cue number four and when it gets to the end of this it will be able to cycle straight to it and as you can see there it went straight into it completely skipped the verse and was able to do it so this is really great for if you want to be able to have it set up but still have the ability to improvise or rearrange your song you know say you're in a band say that you don't really have a very strict set time that day and you can tell that the you know the crowd is really like in a certain part of the song you can go back and repeat that section if you want or say that you're in a worship team and you want to be able to go back and repeat sections a few times or maybe you just feel like today you need to skip a certain section you can be able to do that um, it helps if you have somebody right by the computer to be able to hit those buttons but with smooth seeking on where it only goes at the end of a section you can be able to hit it anytime within it being in that section and it will do it you don't have to count down physically and be able to get your timing exactly right because we all know that sometimes we're just not the best at timing on hitting things or sometimes there's latency with hitting a button and the computer responding with this it takes care of that for you and will automatically switch so another interesting feature that we can have with Reaper for live use is that we can have several tabs set up now I have another tab already set up and I've set a MIDI controller to the action list where anytime I hit this button it will go to the next tab or I have another one set up to go to the previous tab so I don't even have to click on it I can just be able to hit that button on my MIDI controller and it will instantly open up the next project. And when I hit play, it instantly One, cycles two, to it. Three, four. As you can see there, this one has markers all set up as well. And whenever I hit the same cue buttons on this one, it's only cycling this project it's not cycling the other like I will hit five if I go back to the other project the other project still on four wherever I left it off at and say this one's playing What you can do is you can actually save this as a set list. 
And this is what you need the SWS extensions for. Go here to Project Management and Save List of Open Projects. You can save this list and it will be able to recall it every time. So you can save that, say one night you have a 45 minute set list, another night you have a 15 minute set list. You know, you can be able to save each of those and they can have different variations on those songs and you can be able to recall them just as they were when you planned it out. Well, another interesting function that you can do with the extensions is that you can have marker actions where this marker will perform an action. Now, right now what I have this one set up to do is actually to change to the next project tab. As you can see, it automatically switched to the next project. I can cue that up and play. Interesting stuff that you can do with it. I can also set it up to where this will stop uh, the cursor on it. So, as you can see, this is how um, the marker actions work. You have to add in um, an exclamation point and then the marker action code. And I will show you guys how to do this. So we're going to do this with marker eight here. Go up to your actions list and just type in whatever action you wanted. So I'm going to hit stop. So this will stop whatever, whatever action or whatever track is running in that tab right at the moment. So what we're going to do is right click, copy selected action command ID, close out the action list, go into edit marker. We're going to put an exclamation point, which tells it that it's, it's a command instead of just being a number. And then we're going to paste that. And what it should do is it stop this. As you can see, it stopped. So that way that we would be able to have this play, it'll instantly switch to the next project. It stopped. And I can play the next one. One, two, three, four. And that's all without having to hit anything except play. Now, another interesting thing is that with regions, these are these little colored bits up here above the markers, we can actually change the arrangement of the song on the fly. Or maybe say you wanted to repeat the intro and you decided to do that 15 minutes before your set. Well, what you can do set up a region there. Now regions are set up just by having a time selection and then you can hit shift R and it'll put in a region. So let's say we want to double that intro. I just click on it, hold down control and drag. And it is, as you can see, I've doubled the intro. <laughs> go smoothly in between them and you can just control Z and get rid of that it shifts the entire project over to meet that where you want that section and you can actually do that with switching sections around let's say just for fun we want to switch the verse and chorus around it switched all the tracks that are in there with it <laughs> instantly switch back and forth. Now one suggestion I would have if you're doing a rather large set list and just in general unless you're needing to play an instrument live you know, right during the set 
I would suggest rendering everything out as a wave, simply because it's a lot less pro you know a lot less processing power, and you know you can be able to have more songs open at the same time, because even though this is in the background, it will be using up some of your CPU. So, or not CPU, but RAM. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Um, another one last thing I just thought of um, how to add click in um, a really easy way to do this is just insert new track go up here to insert click source and it will add a click which is identical to the one that you would have up here um, now personally I don't like the Reaper click that well um, because it can seem to get lost when you start having especially like four on the floor tracks that click is really hard to hear but you, know, you can add in other click sounds you can actually be able to go in and edit your click preferences um, you can put in a sample for it um, and another suggestion that I would have for running live show tracks is to run this, turn off master parent send and actually run it through another hardware output. That way that either a monitor engineer or say you're doing your own mixing yourself, that you guys will be able to hear click and then it's not going out through the mains. One last suggestion is cues. You treat it as in the same channel that you would do clicks. One, two, three, four. I have Sesame Street there counting me down but um, that's just to be able to tell you where you are in the song and say there's maybe a, a major change in one section it just counts your band down so that they know where they're at um, and that that really helps because sometimes you can get lost um, say that one section is really similar for a very long period of time or there's a part where everything dies out and you have a pause that count back in helps a lot. <laughs> it helps a lot. I remember out on the road, we had one song that actually had a part where it slowed down and then it had to go back in. And the click from the studio files was consistent the entire time, even though it went out just drums and guitar and vocal in one section, but slowed down slightly that click stayed the same so you could end up losing track of where you are but we had a cue count us back in that helped us stay focused on what part of the song we were in so anyway that's basically how to do it um, if you're doing lots of different set lists and stuff I would say have an open project button on the toolbar and you can actually do this by customized toolbar um, for open project list, you know, to be able to save set list, you will need SWS extensions. So, but they're free. It's maybe like a 10 minute setup, you know, just downloading it and sticking it in. And it, it will add so much more to Reaper. Anyway, hope that helps guys and adios.